imagine if people stood here 4,000 years ago looking out at, at that. that. We've decided that we've kind of done Menorca, so we're going to leave now and head to Sardinia. <laughs> We're leaving here today, we're in Citrudella, um, which is the old capital, but we're leaving. Been here about five days now. Yeah. Um, and we're leaving to go just around the corner. Um, there's supposed to be some old ruins, so we're gonna go and see them. We're nearly there now. We've had to motor the whole way because there's no wind. There's only about two knots but it doesn't matter too much because it charges all our batteries when we've got the engine on anyway. So just topped them up a bit and it wasn't that far, so it's okay. So we kayaked into here and saw that there was actually a space. So we've just come in and got anchored, which is super exciting. Where are we going today? To go and look at some Stone Age ruins. During the late prehistoric times in Menorca, people buried their dead in large cemeteries consisting of hypogea or man-made caves. These caves were dug out of the rock and were usually to be found in cliffs overlooking gullies and the coast, as well as in rocky outcrops in the vicinity of their villages. The necropolis at Cala Moral is typical of the cemeteries during the late Talaiotic period, 500 to the 1st century BC. They were very often located in cliffs in ravines that lead down to the sea. After the Romans conquered the island in 120 BC, the necropolis of Cala Morel continued to be used for several centuries. The necropolis at Cala Morel consists of a group of 15 hypogea, most of them circular in shape or of a more complex shape. These caves were collective graves where members of the same community, clan or family were buried in the same place with variations in the treatment of the dead according to the customs of the community. A very common ritual seemed to be laying the deceased on a wooden pallet or in a coffin with his or her funerary objects. A different ritual was the laying out of the body on a funeral pyre, placing limestones on top and burning it. The fire would consume the soft tissues and the limestone would convert to quicklime. Once everything had cooled down and hardened, the remains could be collected and deposited inside the cave. There seems to be no social distinction among the deceased, although some of the grave goods found have more value than others. Particularly worth a visit are the two oldest caves in the necropolis. They date from about 3,000 years ago and still preserve the remains of a stone passageway. But isn't it impressive, right? People were living in caves like this, but the Egyptians, even later back, had built the pyramids yeah. and like, the massive temples and stuff. Yeah. Just imagine there was people stood here 4,000 years ago looking out at that. at that but there was no buildings no boats we don't know there might have been huts and houses and yeah farm or whatever fishing village yeah, fishing boats i mean think how think of everything you need to sail yeah you couldn't just get on a raft and come here no so by calling them stone age it's a bit i think it's a bit of a discredit yeah because they had knowledge of boat building sailing navigation um Stonework construction. Basic survival. If you put someone here now with no money, no um, car, no anything, just with themselves, you wouldn't survive. 
This seems more like a house, this one, because it's got like a fireplace. So this would sort of be like your kitchen area. And your bedroom. Your front room so. and your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, you put the telly over there. Oh, look, they even put somewhere for a painting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a mirror. Oh, it could be. It could be, yeah. Mirror. Check yourself before you a go nice out. polished up bit of wood might do that. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, they must have had metal. So, polished bit of metal. Yeah. Oh, look, that can't be... Is that original? That's not original. I ain't even going to talk to you anymore. What? Of course it's not original. Are oh. you the one that said there's metal? The way they've layered up the stones and everything. Hmm? Like, they've layered up these stones, haven't they? No, it's because it's collapsing. Oh. It, what this is, is it's separating from the wall, so it's all about to collapse in. Oh. But it's made out of limestone, so it's, it's pretty weak uh, material. That's why they carved it back in the day, because it's an easy, easy stone to work. Well, yeah. So as stone goes, it's quite weak. But uh, what's, what's interesting is the Egyptians used pink granite, which is one of the hardest stones you can uh, work. I want to learn a bit more about these Egyptians. I think there's more to know. We've just got back from seeing the caves and we've decided that we've kind of done Menorca. So we're going to leave now and head to Sardinia. Bit of a quick split second decision. But we checked the weather, it seems like it's going to be okay and we're good to go. It's only a two day sail, well, one, a day and a half, two days, so it should be fine. We're just quickly running the water maker to make sure we've got enough water and then we'll be heading off. Ryan, how many miles have we got to go? Well, it's 209 for the shortest point. I've put a bosser in from here, but because of the wind, we're not going to... I mean, this isn't an ideal day to leave, but... We just got a bit bored, didn't we, here? Yeah, there wasn't really anywhere left to go that we were interested in, so we're just gonna go. If it takes us an extra day, it takes us an extra day. We've got water, food. We don't have any gas, though. We're very low on gas. Yeah. So, might be eating canned food cold, but it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. No one's, no one's ever died from eating cold canned food. I don't know that for sure. That could be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Goodbye, Menorca. We've been here quite a while, to be fair, haven't we? Three weeks or something. Yeah. Yeah, we've been here well, a long we have time. Seen everywhere on this island. We have seen it all. Yeah, it's been beautiful. Well, all, everywhere coastal. Yeah. So we're leaving from Cala Morale. 209 miles. What time is it? Uh, it's 25 past 12. 25 past 12, and the day is Monday? So hopefully get in for Wednesday. I think Wednesday lunchtime is probably realistic because I think we're going to end up on the north of the island, not Bossa sort of in the middle. Yeah. Uh, the reason we want to go to Bossa is because it's the cheapest marina. Um, and we would like to wash the boat down and just do a few bits. Yeah. We've been a for two months now. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. But if we get there, we get there. If we don't, we don't. Yeah, we'll see. We've got the main sail up. We are just tacking out away from the island because there's not that much wind. Um, we're hardly really moving. So we're just tacking out to get a better angle with the wind, hopefully a bit stronger wind. And then we'll get the light wind out and then hopefully we'll be doing a little bit of speed. What's our speed now? Two knots. Two. So at this rate, it will take us... <laughs> 10 days. 10 days. We decided to get the jib out instead of the light wind um, and now we're doing quite well actually, we've got about five knots. being pretty strong 
um, to nothing. At the minute, we've got it pretty strong. You can see with the white cap. And we've got a nice little lean on. We've decided that we're not gonna go to Sardinia because the wind is really fluky. We're literally getting from about four knots up until we think like 20 knots, don't we? Um, which is just rubbish. The swell isn't isn't bad. Um, no, but it, we just don't seem to be carrying any speed. And with it being like this, it's just going to take us so long to get there. So we scrapped that idea. Um, it was a bit exciting for a while, but. It's taken us two hours to do four miles. Yeah, it's taken us two hours to do four miles, so it's, it's not it's not worth it. So we're going to go to a different anchorage that we haven't been to before, have a look around, and hopefully we'll be leaving for Sardinia when the wind gets a bit better. The fluky wind turned pretty consistent. Um, we've had about 20 knots, and it's been really good actually, really good sailing. We're still not going to Sardinia. We have avoided that plan and we've come around the other side of the island but yeah it's been really fun isn't it yeah <laughs> pops isn't very happy and we didn't quite um stir everything that well so it's all a little bit of a mess go to Sardinia because it's taken us seven and a half hours to travel 20 miles and Sardinia is like 200 or something so um, yeah I think I think we made the right call looks really nice um, there does look like a lot of boats up there in the anchorage so hopefully we can find the space and then we're gonna go for a little walk with pops and find somewhere to have a beer so we've just got to the anchorage now um, it looks really nice pops is super happy because there's loads of places for her to go on a walk should be good thanks for watching and a special thank you to our patrons if you like the videos and would like to help us keep making them you can donate on our patron page or through paypal follow our journey on facebook and instagram all the links are in the description thanks <laughs>